Hello everybody, my name is Alan, I'm from CyberLab, and today will be another video about Oracle Cloud. In this video specifically, I want to show how you can configure your NHGS Proxy Manager in such a way that you don't need to chop any extra port. The only port that you're going to need to open in your Oracle Cloud will be the port 80 for HTTP and a port 443 for HTTPS. And in this way, the rest of your application will work local in your network and will work local in the Docker. So in this way, you have one extra protection in such a way that you don't need to open any other port to access it. So if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show in this video. But first of all, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for the channel, and let's understand a little bit more about it. Before we start to explain how you can do this configuration, let's go to the basics. First thing, this configuration or this setup that you're gonna do, it's done in one of the instances in on Oracle Cloud, but you can do this configuration any kind of VPS that you want. It's interesting you run only in a VPS because in your network or your home network, only port forwarding or anything that is blocking the port will be your router and everything is internal will be working the same way, so don't need. But in the case of VPS, you don't want that any other application have this open port to access it. In the case of a VPS, you need to open specific ports for that specific application, so it's not interesting to leave those ports open unless you need it. Other thing, we're gonna need to install Docker in this machine, we're gonna need to install Portainer, and you're gonna need to install NX Proxy Manager. All those applications, after this one, we're going to configure the port forwarding or configure the external website, and that I will be able to close some of the ports that I have. In this way, only port that I need to have is the port 443 and the port 8 for HTTP and HTTPS. So if you come here in my computer, first thing that you can see, this is the machine that is running the application. So this machine has this IP address, and they are running the application. Also, if I go for this specific VCN network, I have this network where I have a few ports open. First port will be 220, which allowed me the SSH access through the PuTTY. Other thing, 9000, where we're gonna be able to configure the portainer. Port 8 and port 443 for my uh, protocols, so HTTP, HTTPS. And in the end, port 81 for configuring the NX proxy manager. So after we configure my external website, I can remove this tool because I will not need to have it. So now we can jump in our PuTTY and start to do our configuration. So let's do it. Once that I open PuTTY, what we need to do, first thing is update our system in the order to get it right. So to update our system, we're gonna use this follow step. Let's clear it first and you're gonna use sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. This part will take a little bit until they upgrade and update all my system. Once that is done, it's ready for the next step. So let's wait. Once that you finish update and upgrade your system, now we can start to install the Docker. To install the Docker, we're gonna install CE certificates, core, GNU, PG, and the LSP release. So I'll put enter and they will finish to install. Now we're gonna download all the keys for my Docker. So now I will run sudo mkdir and I will do the core download Linux Ubuntu PNG and here's the key and put enter. Once that I finish to download the key, then I will configure the keys and I will run this stage. Only thing that I remember, I'm using for the Ubuntu so if you use any other system that's not Ubuntu, please look for the correctly key or correctly configuration for your case. If it's Debian, I know that you only need to change it for Debian, but it's worth you to check. So we'll put enter. And now I will download the configuration for the Docker. So I'll we'll download cool, HTTPS, get docker.com and get docker sh and I'll put enter. Now that this finish it, we can start to install the Docker, but first let's clean the page. And now to install the Docker will be sudo sh get docker sh, and I will put enter. 
In this stage, it will take a little bit more time because they will download all the configuration for the Docker, install it, extract, and once that finished, you will have the Docker running. So let's wait. Okay, once appear this page, it means that uh, your Docker has been installed. And if we go here up, we can see that re revision of the client for the Docker is revision 23.0.4. And the Docker server will be 23.0.4. So now that I have Docker installed, I need to install some extra application for the Docker and make sure that it will work. So I'll put clear and I will install those applications. For the application that you're gonna need will be sudo apt install docker c, docker c click, containize, docker, and docker compose. So now I can put enter and they will install everything. Once that they install it, now we can configure our portainer, or at least install it. First, we need to create a volume for the portainer. So we'll put a sudo docker volume create portainer. And once that this volume has been created, I'll install my portainer. So I'll come here and install portainer and put enter. Once that appear, this information means that the portainer has been installed and I will open the same IP address for my machine plus port 9000. The first time that you open the portainer, you need to create your user. So my user will be admin and my password I will define. Remember, this password needed to have at least 12 characters, so we need to have a long password. So I put create and now I have my portainer create. So if I open here primary and stack, I can create my first stack. As I told, we're going to need to configure the NX proxy manager. So I need to add this proxy manager. So we'll put add a stack. And then I will put in X. So here I can add my configuration. So the configuration that I will use will be this one. I will install the proxy manager and I install the MarianaDB. So once that they finish, they will create both automatically for my installation. And here my user will be Sauber and here my password. I suggest you to have your root password and your MySQL password different, but in this installation will be the same and will not affect. Remember everything that you're changing here in the top, you need to change in the bottom. And now we can create or can install the proxy manager. So we'll put deploy the stack and it will take a few minutes until they download all the configuration, create my both applications, configure my database and that's allowed me to start in any configuration. So let's wait. Once that the stack has been complete, now we can come in container and here I have two applications. First one will be database and the second one will be the app. So in this way, I can come here, copy this IP address and open port 81. So if I come here for my network, I have port 81 open, so we'll be able to access it. After I configure it, I will close this port and that will not allow me to access it. First time that I configure it, I needed to use my use as a admin at example and my password will be change me and I put singing and here we'll configure it. So we'll put my user and my password. So once that I configure all my information, I put next and I create my password and I save. Once that it's safe, my user will be created and here it's my user. So now I can come in dashboard, proxy host and create my first proxy. In my case, I will put my proxy as a proxy manager at uh, sauberlab.com and that uh, here will be my fourth or my host IP. How I know my host IP? Initially, I show you how to use this IP address to configure it, but uh, in this way, you need to keep this port open, what is not interesting. So if I come here, and come here in my apps. And here in the end, we'll have um, the network that's connect. What I suggest you to do is connect for the bridge. And now we need to decide which of the networks that you want. My opinion, I will use this one that's only configured for NX, that will be more hard to change, and that will be stable there. So we'll copy it, come here and copy this information. So once that I have the IP address, Configure it, I will put port 81 and that I will configure it. Remember, once that you use this kind of IP address, you don't need to use the configure 
IP address. If perhaps you change this one for port 450, they still as a 443, it doesn't matter what. The same thing, if anything that you configure, it, they will still as a 443. Now configure my SSL certification. So we'll come here, create a new certification and put force, come here and that I will agree. So we'll put save. So now once that's configured this port, I can come here in my proxy manager, open it. But you're gonna say, Alan, I still have my network allowed port 81. So come here and I remove port 81. So now I remove port 81 and here I will be able to access using this application. So let's do for my portainer. The next website that I will use, I will put port.sauberlab.com. So now I need to decide what IP or host that I'm gonna use. If I come here, my app for NEX, I don't have my bridge connect, so I need to connect it. And once that I connect for the bridge, I come back my container, portainer, and here I have bridge as well. So if I come here, configure it for portainer and come here and paste this IP address, port 9000, come here my SSL and I create a new SSL certification or I can use exactly the same and force it and put save. Why I'm able to use this IP address? Because I have two options. First one, if I come here, I come here my portainer, the standard one, it's my bridge. Where I have this IP address, or if I enter in proxy manager default network, I can have this one. So I can use both IP address to configure it because in my proxy manager, if I come here for my bridge networks, I have both as well. I don't need to have both, I can have only bridge and this way will work, or I can have only NX and configure it, or other one to have exactly the same IP or same network. In this way, instead of use this external IP address for my machine, I'll use this internal IP address. So if I come here and I come and delete this port 9000, now only to show will open a different browser and here is port 8 and here is port 90 and I'm not able to access it. Why? Because it's only local and those IP address is exactly the same. So if I come here, my machine is still on for this IP address, but I'm not able to use those. Only able to use those external links because once that I configure it, I close any extra port for it. So now we arrive in the end of this video. In this way, you can have all the ports close in your uh, virtual or your firewall for your VPS, only leave open port 8 and port 443 for HTTP and HTTPS access. So if you like this video and think that it was interesting, please don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for the channel if you're not yet, and see you next time. Bye.